God's children. What you are is humankind. But who you are brings more of you to mind. And likewise, what God is, is one. But who God is, is much more fun as Father, Son, and Spirit bless and bind you all with grace, mercy, and peace. Amen. Does wisdom not call out? Does understanding not raise her voice? And yet there is so much that is not understood. As Christian people, we do make certain firm claims when it comes to our God. We are rather specific that ours is the one God who claims all the lives of earth as children who are beloved, in whom all of heaven is well pleased. We make a very specific claim that ours is the one God who is Emmanuel, who is with us, who draws so near to us as to share our flesh and bone and blood and breath and show what it means to be God by showing what it means to be human in Jesus Christ. We make a very specific claim about our God, that ours is the one God who is not far away, like a clockmaker in the sky or hiding behind a cloud or some distant planet, but is the Holy Spirit abiding here, present, filling our thinking minds, our loving hearts, our growing, breathing, inspired bodies. We make very specific claims about God, yet where wisdom is calling out and where understanding is lifting her voice, we are also people who have the grand humility to make a claim that we don't really know or understand or make sense of our God very well at all. In fact, on this day, the doctrine of the Holy Trinity welcomes us to trust in something we don't understand. And this doctrine of the Holy Trinity teaches us to love someone who doesn't make sense. The Holy Trinity welcomes us to trust in something we don't understand. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Holy Spirit of God was hovering over those waters as the dove that came down on Jesus' baptism. At that time, the holy voice cried out, let there be, and there was. And Eden was established, called very good. And we can't understand how God could create something so orderly, so very good, and then something that falls apart so easily. We can't understand why would God tempt us with something so seemingly beautiful as the knowledge of good and evil? Why would God threaten us that one step out of the bounds of perfection would lead to our ultimate demise? We don't understand how God the good creator is God the creator of this mess in which we live. And yet, there was an answer in all that we don't understand when we were caught in our sin and our shame that rather than carrying out punishment and threat, our Lord would arrive with robes of righteousness and mercy 
and allow us to trust in the midst of this ununderstood creation that we will yet have a step forward from where the Spirit hovers over the waters. It's not long in the story of our faith that those waters of creation are replaced by the waters of a flood. When God, who made our lives and began redeeming us right out of the Garden of Eden, that same very God looked at us and somehow said that it seems every inclination of the human heart is always continually nothing but evil from the first day we're born. And God, who was merciful in the past, decides now to wash us all away. And God, who had mercy on Adam and Eve, is suddenly the God who only has mercy for righteous Noah. And we don't understand, God, how can you turn the page from mercy to a flood And yet you then take a rainbow and stretch it in the sky. And after pointing out the continual problems of the world we don't understand, you say that you're the one who will repent. You're the one who will turn away from punishment. You're the one who will put aside the flood and return with mercy so that the world we don't understand is once again a world met with radical mercy that somehow we will live? This is the God who hovered over those waters of creation, who put away those raging floodwaters after Noah, who found us down in the mud, found us where no one liked us, where no one loved us, where they only took what they could get from us. This is the God who plucked us up for the walk of Exodus. The God who said, I will show up where nothing makes sense and give you a way forward. I will show you mercy. I will cry out with wisdom and understanding where you can't understand the pain you suffer. But of course, God only leads us through those 40 years of exodus for us to be carried away by Assyrians and then exile with Babylonians and then overrun by Greeks and then taken over by Romans and now dispersed around the world. I don't understand, God, why do you put your time where the waters are so troubled? You keep giving us mercy. You keep calling us home. And life seems to stay such a mess. But in the midst of these things we don't understand, God continues to speak a word of mercy for us to be here again. God joins us in the grand story of our Christian faith. God steps into the shadow of Eden. God steps into the generations that followed the flood. God steps in, in the person of Jesus Christ, into the world that knows how broken our systems are. God stands at our side, yet somehow is taken away to a cross where God suffers and is broken and torn apart And the water of creation is now replaced with the waters of our tears. And we have to ask, God, I don't understand how nothing gets better. How day after day we are suffering the same brokenness, waiting for the same promise of mercy. The Holy Trinity welcomes us to trust in something we don't understand. When the spirit of life comes into the body of Christ our Lord, who stands with us again, children of the Heavenly Father, we may not understand this world in which we live. We may not understand this God. But we trust that mercy keeps coming. 
mercy that met us in the beginning of time, mercy that lifted us from our floodwaters of baptism, mercy that keeps calling us back from the exiles and oppressions we do not understand, mercy that keeps rolling away the stone and rolling away our tears. For us to be people of hope and the Spirit's inspiration in the midst of all we do not understand. And then in that moment, the Holy Spirit teaches us from that mercy to love someone who doesn't make sense. Because it's hard to make all of those stories of the Bible add up into logic as we like logic. It is hard to take those steps of a pilgrim past and see where they fit in our days now and the future to which we're going. It's hard to see how a God who has never been sensical is still a God who senses our need. Yet the one thread of mercy that we have been receiving throughout all of our faith is the unity we find in a Father and a Son and a Holy Spirit fundamentally defined as love. That in the midst of all wisdom would cry out for us to be people of love who sit as children on God's lap rejoicing in this created world and in the lives we may not understand on the siblings and sisters and brothers around us, but finding that love of God that binds all of us in one as much as Father, Son, and Spirit are unified. The Holy Trinity welcomes us to trust in something we don't understand. The Holy Trinity teaches us to love someone who doesn't make sense. Looking even in the mirror, we find the Holy Trinity's love for the people we are. Amen.